Uh, my name is Lars Krutak. I am a tattoo anthropologist, and I am the curator of Tattoo Identity and in Ink, which is here at its new home at the Museum of Danish America in Elkhorn, Iowa. And it celebrates 5,000 years of tattooing history across cultures. We learn a lot about the meanings behind tattoos, as well as the technology of tattooing. And we have tattooing tools that span the millennia here. Um, the ancient ones, of course, are reproductions. And we also have some really great uh, local collections um, that have found their way here from Omaha, uh, from Milwaukee, and from other places in the heartland. So it's really exciting to share the history of tattooing with the local community here. And and I'm really excited to give a lecture tonight that speaks about all of these things and why tattooing is important for humanity. Now, cross culturally, uh, tattooing has a lot to do with identity. Um, it marks where people come from, the territories they belong to, the languages they speak. Um, and each tattoo, I find, is sort of a biographical statement about that individual. And if you know how to read, so the messages encoded in tattooing, no matter what culture, you can really come to know and learn a lot about the person who wears that tattoo. So. This case, which is at the introduction of the exhibition, um, shows some of the various tattooing technologies that were used in the indigenous world. Actually, this one particularly focuses on hand tapping. So there's a cayenne, a replica cayenne tattooing uh, kit here from the island of Borneo, uh, as well as a real tattooing tool um, that was used to mark me amongst the Kalinga of the Northern Philippines by a master tattoo artist, Wang Odd Ogai, who might hold a Guinness Book of World's record because she's over 100 years and she continues to tattoo in the traditional hand tapping technology. Um, so that piece of bamboo has a lot of meaning to me um, because it just brings back all of those memories when she and her 12 year old niece, Grace, uh, tattooed me in 2007 in her house. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've been hand tapped before, but I've never been tattooed with a palmello thorn, um, which is, you know, basically like a grapefruit, like a citrus tree thorn that was just picked straight up from the tree in her backyard. Um, at that time, she was 87 years old, so not quite as steady with her hands as she probably was when her youth, in her youth. Um, and it took about 35 to 40 minutes to complete this small tattoo I have of a centipede on my ankle. Um, and the second layer of tattooing was definitely the most painful. So there's one layer where it just sort of sets the ink and then you go in with another layer of ink, basically retattooing into the, the punctures that were made before to really make the ink dark and black so that you can carry it you know, onwards into the future and it'll be bold and bright. But I wouldn't trade it for the world. Um, but actually the most terrifying experience was that because she wanted to teach me everything that there was to know about tattooing, she insisted that I tattoo her on the back of her hand with, with a similar tool. Now, I'm no tattoo artist. I've never given a tattoo in my life uh, prior to that time, and that's the only tattoo I'd ever given to anybody. And think about it. You know, an 87-year-old woman, your grandmother, with veins popping out of her hands, and I don't know what I'm doing. And ultimately, halfway through, sh through she said, you know, I'm in tears. You must stop. You are not fit to be a tattoo artist. And I fully agree with that statement. <laughs> okay. Now, another important element of this traveling exhibition is that it started at the Vesterheim uh, National Norwegian American Museum in eastern Iowa, in Decorah, Iowa, in 2019. And now it's traveling to a series of Scandinavian American museums across the country, including here, the Museum of Danish America in Elkhorn, Iowa. And it not only celebrates the history of you know, tattooing across the indigenous world, but across 
across humanity, um, and especially across Scandinavia. There's a rich tattooing history across Scandinavia um, that goes back to the Viking era, although we only have one firm written record describing you know, Viking-style tattoos. There has been um, you know, a, a great movement into sort of a neo-Nordic or Viking-style tattooing renaissance, if you will, in the last 20 to 25 years. And two of these uh, like sort of noteworthy artists that are practicing today, uh, we've commissioned pieces by them here in their particular Viking styles. And we have um, a sleeve here and a back of a hand tattoo by Tor Olas Venevig of Bergen, Norway. And then another, uh, this one here is with the Vejvisur compass on the bottom of the hand and other sort of Viking style knot work tattoo of the Midsgard serpent, which is an important um, entity in ancient Viking uh, folklore. And this piece was commissioned for the original show in 2019 uh, by Colin Dale of Skin and Bone Tattoo in Copenhagen, Denmark. So we don't we we want to celebrate you know the entire history of tattooing, but also have a specific focus on the history of Scandinavia. And we have other Scandinavian American artists um, like Amon Dietzel, who is featured in another part of the exhibition. Um, we have a brief history of uh, his achievements in, in in tattooing in America and his significance and importance. Uh, um, as well as another Danish tattoo artist, Frank Rosenkild, who's actually the president of the Danish uh, Tattoo Guild. Um, and we have a new commission piece by him, which is more in the Danish sailor style of tattooing. Um, and we can look at that in a moment as well. So yeah, right around 1900, um, you know, tattooing became very popular in the world's port of calls, mainly because uh, tattooing technology had advanced with the advent in the 1890s of the electric tattoo machine. So tattoos previously were pricked in for the most part, uh, which is a very slow and tedious and painful uh, process. But now tattoos could be given much more quickly. Uh, various colors could be used and sailors coming home from you know being out in the seas for many months or even years at a time um, were eager to sort of you know show their accomplishments um, and to commemorate some of the events that they had on sea some of the places they visited maybe girlfriends other noteworthy events and right here is basically a page from uh, Norwegian sailors tattoos a book by Tor Ola Svenevik who we just spoke about one of his Viking style arms there in another part of the exhibition and this sort of just highlights some of the more popular um, Norwegian sailor motifs um, and the meanings behind them and the reason why a sailor may acquire these tattoos in various ports of call um, over his lifetime. And we have a new commission piece by Frank Risenkild over here in the Danish sailor style. And now he is the president of the Danish Guild of Tattoo Artists. And he's also the founder of the Danish Tattoo Museum. So we're really excited to have um, this commission piece here on display, which is marked on the forearm and the inside of the forearm, which you can see through a mirror uh, that shows the underside of the arm. So it's very, very exciting. One of the great things about this exhibition is that um, we reach out to local tattoo collectors, or they reach out to us when they find out that this exhibition is coming near to their hometown. So in this case, uh, we have some flash sheets and early tools um, by Roy Doodles McDonald, who was a practicing tattoo artist, uh, I believe, in Omaha in the 1920s. And Omaha is just a stone's throw away from Elkhorn. It's about a 30-minute drive. Um, and this is part of the collection of Aaron McKeo um, of Inks, Tattoos, Piercings, and More in Omaha. So it's really exciting to sort of showcase these lesser known tattoo artists um, and to bring these collections into the public so people can learn more about the history of tattooing in the United States as well as particular regions. So another important part about this exhibition is sort of the educational component. Now here, visitors, including youth, can apply their artistic skills to these silicone arms and hands to see what kind of tattoo that they can create. Um, 
and I think it's really, really important, you know, that, that you learn about tattooing through the actual process of making tattoos and of exploring, you know, your your artistic abilities and putting them on flesh. It's not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of practice. It takes apprenticeships um, to become a, an established tattoo artist. And it's a long process, but this could be, you know, the place where a young man or young woman, you know, finds their passion for tattooing and makes it a career. Now, I'm standing in the middle of the Great Plains in the Museum of Danish America, and in this region of the Great Plains, there were incredibly complex and meaningful indigenous tattooing traditions amongst several uh, Suyan groups, including the Osage, the Iowa, who were standing pretty close to their traditional homelands, the Kanza or Ka, um, Oto, Omaha, and other indigenous groups. Um, and their tattoos, especially for men, could only be earned through the accomplishment of war honors. Um, you had to put your life on the line to accomplish these war honors to protect your community before you could ever hope to earn the right to be tattooed. And in the Osage case, these are, each tattoo element belonged to a particular clan and were considered to be life symbols. And after a man had accomplished 13 war honors, or Odon, he was allowed to be tattooed with these tattoos that were believed to promote longevity, wellness, and to help perpetuate the tribe. You know, as the curator of this exhibition, um, what really inspired me is to be able to tell the story of tattooing in the way that I wanted to tell the story. Um, I didn't want to focus on one geographical region. I didn't want to focus on just sort of one, you know, particular indigenous culture or Western tattooing. I wanted to sort of bring it all together uh, and also have living artists a part of that exhibition by commissioning uh, artworks that can be seen and that will travel and that will educate. Um, you know, because after all, tattooing is about the history of humanity. Um, and I think it's really important because nowadays tattooing is, you know, one in three Americans, one in four Americans has a tattoo. So we can all identify on how tattooing is a part of our identity, part of our rites of passage, um, part of our achievements, um, how we commemorate, you know, loved ones or you know, accomplishments. And I think we can all, you know, we can understand, you know, cross-culturally why tattooing is important. Um, and I think it's important to share this with, you know, younger generations and older generations. Um, and especially not to forget the stories behind these artists that were working in the United States a long ago that many people have, that time has forgotten, basically. So to be able to revive that history, to bring it into a pub, the public sphere, um, I think is really, really important. Um, and, and to share it because it's a significant part of American history that we should not forget.